My name is Dan and I live in Singapore. This is the this is the thing <laughs> that started uh, everything. Okay, I I was alone at, at home, so I was very casual. But suddenly this thing dwell in me that Christianity have their own power. Okay, I say okay, God, I make a deal with you. If within two weeks, within two weeks, you can show me uh, that you are God, then I will believe in you. But if the two weeks is over, if you don't show me anything, then I will stick to my Thai Buddhism. I don't know why I say that, but it was some kind of a very casual, but I took it quite seriously actually. Because then after that, I took a New Testament, the, the second part of the Bible from my sister, and I start to read Matthew, Mark, Matthew. Uh, it's like a story, so so it's okay, but uh, I laugh at some of the things that was said, you know, love your enemies, I say, you know, you know how many enemies I have, you know, how to love them all, you know, that kind of thing. So I say, it's quite impossible, you know, this is not possible. I was not taking it very seriously. But the two weeks almost over, and we, I joined the uh, National Police Cadet, NPCC in short, in Singapore, it's a, it's a uniform group, it's a police uniform group. So by then, Sec 3, you are quite senior, so we organized a camp. This camp was uh, in school compound, the old Commonwealth Secondary School. And that night, that was the, the two, last two nights before the 14 days is over. The, the last two nights, that is the thing that happened. One of my friends, he came to, because we have a, our own, the leaders sometimes, you know, we have privilege, we always have a room, yeah. So he just came in and said, uh, I saw something. You know. I said, you know, what do you see? He said, we see ghosts. I say ghosts. What 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 do you see that is you say is ghosts? He said no. I just see black uh, shadows in a, in a toilet, and he was quite afraid. So I say okay. I mean, but you don't he didn't harm you. So why are you afraid? Said, no, no. So when he was sharing so fearfully, some of the the others uh, try to help. You say lighten the situation. Oh, why not? That time Ghostbusters just over the show, Ghostbusters. So they say, come on, let's be Ghostbusters. Let's go and catch the thing. So they just went off. But I was I was not with them. I I can't remember because I'm supposed to fetch my girlfriend that time, my wife now. Yeah. So I'm supposed to fetch her because she's she's working and she's supposed to join our camp after that. So I remember I stayed and I, I supposed to go. And, so I, when I was walking out towards the exit, I heard people screaming and running. So, so for a moment I thought, oh, something must have happened. So I just went back. I just walked back and I saw this guy, the, the guy who said he saw something. He was not himself. So he was like an animal. And he walked very, in a very odd manner. So, so when I see that the moment I see that and, and my friend said, you know you, you I know you have a lot of pendant and you know but I was can I, I just cannot concentrate on anything. It's just like there is a there's a light. I, I don't I don't know how to describe it because it's just there's something very confident and the focus was just on that friend that have this uh, something in him. I think you just follow me. So the, my friend just follow him, and the rest of the guys was just following behind. So we went to the home economic room where they teach. Last time when they use that room to teach the girls how to cook, next time they can be a good housewife. So the sofa, he was sitting on the sofa. So so I was I, I was I was clear, my mind was clear. But you will you you did not it's like it's not myself to go to him and say, in the name of Jesus I ask you to leave. So that I think that's life. And he was awake again and he said, What happened? I thought uh, we, we we were somewhere in the place. So it, it happened so suddenly, everything happened so suddenly. 
So I just paused and then say, ah, just excuse me for. I went out to one corner I remember and I say, God, please leave me because I'm a very unclean person. <laughs> I'm very unclean, please leave me. And I just can't turn back after that. My life was committed to God. And the interesting part is when I went back, I was so excited, read the Bible, and there was one Peter. And when, when Christ asked him to put the net down after they didn't have any catch. Mm. They just said, oh, your boat further, let down the net, is it? No, we catch all day, but we catch nothing. But if you say so, I will do it. So he went out, he caught a lot of fish. And that is the exact same thing, he said. Leave me for I'm... Uh, he just said, leave, leave me because I'm unclean. Mm. So well, when I read that part of it, yeah, I know that there's no turning back. Explain to me again, because uh, explain to me the metaphor from Peter, because God sends him back. He says, "No, it's it's actually the passage talk about Peter. Peter is a fisherman, right? Uh -huh. And they they were drying their hands because whole day they can't catch anything. And when Jesus came, he said, you know, roll your boat out and let let your net down. So he said, but we catch whole day." But we catch nothing. But because you say so, we will go. So when they went and they let their nets down, they caught a lot of fish. The, the net nearly broke. And and he said, Lord, leave me for an unclean person. Leave me. Leave me for I'm an unclean person. Yeah. Who yeah. said it? Who said that? Peter. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's like when when the situation happened, I, I said the exact same thing. Mm. So, so it's like, from then on, I, I know that I, I, yeah, so, so that part of life changed my life completely. Yeah. What did, when you said, uh, God, you know, I'm a clean person, or, mm -hmm. what did you feel like was the answer back to you? No. That, okay, when when the thing is when the, the the thing happened, my friend was delivered. So it's like I go to go back to normal. It's nothing special that I feel, but that there is some kind of uh, reverence and awe that you know that God is so holy that we are so unclean that we cannot see Him face to face. You know. So when we when I start to understand that yes, because of our sin, we cannot communicate with God. And we need because even if we try our hundred percent, we cannot we cannot because there's so many cares and concerns in our mind. And we are just not perfect. We cannot meet the perfect God. Even with our hundred percent effort. Because it's just an effort. Even uh, for us we are we we already come short of his standard. And that's where Jesus come to the picture to, to bridge that gap. Because he's a perfect person and he died for the uncleanness that we have. So it makes us able to, to come before God. So it's when I understand that, the, that means the whole gospel of the Christian, that I only understand the part that there's a God and he's holy. Yeah? So when, when I come to fully know that, to be redeemed from the sin I have, I need the blood of Jesus. 
that is when I commit. I say yes, yeah, I, will, I need this plant because without this, I can't, I can't communicate with God. Yeah. So, so that is how I become Christian, yeah. and I've been involving in Christian work in, in church. Yeah. And I find that it, 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 there's a kind of strength. Not, not just the strength, I wouldn't say it's just the strength, yeah. but there's a personal kind of uh, uh, relationship between God and me. Through, not through my holiness or, or the good that I do, or because I sacrifice some of my time. It's not about that. It's about understanding that I have fallen short and He has provided the solution. Yeah. I can come before Him and it's totally the word grace. As you mentioned, it's totally grace. It's nothing on my part that you know because I was so that that is uh, that's how I become a Christian. Mm.